For the past four years, we've spent as much of our free time as possible living and travelling in this old Land Rover. It's a 1997 Defender 110 with a 300 TDI engine. And when we first bought it, we did a quick rush job on our interior build. So now, four years later, we thought it was about time we gave it a little refresh, as we just had our dream Alucab Icarus pop top conversion installed for longer trips. Having recently moved into a rural cottage in Scotland and still working full time, all of our trips are currently taken when we have time off. We don't plan on slowing down anytime soon though, and we've still got plans to keep exploring Europe, hopefully taking off more incredible places in this little old Land Rover with our two dogs, Henry and Wally. But right now, it's time to get cracking, so join us as we rebuild our camper interior ourselves, ready for summer. We hope you enjoy watching two total amateurs with no experience just trying to figure it out as we go along. So we've just been pulling out the old build, it really feels like the end of an era. It feels like it was just yesterday that we were putting it all in before our trip to Norway. But now we're pulling it all out because next week we're going to drive back down south to England to get some excited upgrades fitted. Right next to that camera nice. and then... Uh... So we're back at Ninoverland, it's been just about a week uh, with the car being in the shop, getting a whole bunch of cool things fitted and now we're going to go pick the car up. Ah! <laughs> Did you see it? I think I can see it, I'm not sure. <gasps> I'm so nervous though because it's like it's such a big change to the car. I know. <laughs> Why are we whispering? Oh my god, they're whispering. Uh, oh my god. to change my shoes before we came to be cute. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever get used to being able to just like stand up in the back of the car. Like just, instead of just having to crouch down all the time, you can just, <laughs> you just stand up. It's so weird, isn't it? That's what I'm so excited for as well in the new build is like, obviously we'll have like the walkway and stuff, but you can just like get dressed standing up as uh -huh. well. Literally you cannot even touch the ceiling. Like it's just unreal. So we're starting with the back door. When we built the interior last time, the back door panel was the last thing we did, but we built it with the door open. So when we were like, okay, we're all finished, and we went to shut the door, we hadn't given ourselves enough room between the door and like the bed frame. So the door shut and it just like bounced wide open again. So we're not gonna make that mistake. We're gonna build the back door first and then everything else will come after. So we've already removed like the rear windscreen wiper where we've kept all like the electronics and stuff in case we ever wanna put it back in, in the future. What's this, Leo? <laughs> Four years ago, we took out the rear wiper motor and there was obviously a big hole left at the back of the door. So we used a wine bottle port to plug it. Four years later, it's still holding. <laughs> so I'm thinking, let's not replace it. It was a temporary measure, but... It's now permanent part of the car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so far, it's held in and mm. we haven't had water leaking through the hole. So. Yeah, it is a synthetic cork, so that's probably... And it's what they're made for. They're made to keep water out. So it's like, why would you not use it for the same yeah. thing, you know? Genius. Genius plan. 
So since we've bought the car, every time we've gone camping, there's always been at least one moment where we like stood to try and get something out of the back of the car, and if the car's parked on a slope, other doors come and like hit us on the back. So we finally got ourselves a gas strut. So we're gonna fit that, and then we can get on with the rest of the back door build. Nice. <laughs> Like with most screws, nuts, bolts on a 25 year old car, this one is firmly stuck. I've tried big screwdriver, tried pliers. Now, we'll just drill it out. The opening is so nice though. Cooking. Yeah, and it'll hold the door open when we're doing a little cookout. Mm. That new table that we've got as well, drop down table. Yeah, that should be arriving so soon, so we can yeah. fit that once that arrives. 30. Got the frame all built up last night. Um, I put a coat of like black varnish. I thought it would come out a little bit darker, but we can just put a couple more coats on it. That's going to mount up to the door there, and I'll just use like some existing mounting points from the last time we built the frame. And then this exterior panel will then mount to the frame, and then hopefully it should give us a nice clean surface. Still with space to undo the lock, and then kind of sort of built it around where the gas strut mount's going to be. When we did the back door setup last time, first we painted it, but then because we were sort of cooking around here as well, it got super dirty, it just didn't look that great. So all we did, we ended up taking off, covering it with like a wood look vinyl, and that meant it was like really easy to wipe down. We're going to do the same thing this time, but instead of like a wood look vinyl, we're just going to go for like a plain black, and then hopefully that'll just give us a really nice sort of clean surface to then put the front runner drop down table onto it. Here's one we covered earlier. Ta da! Nice, huh? Whoa. Got a little cooking surface. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so we finished the back door. I'm super happy with how it turned out. It looks really good the table it's gonna be so nice to have like this surface to cook on and stuff like quick coffee in the morning that kind of thing yeah loads of storage trust with that now it's time to start back <laughs> so the back floor of Land Rover's already got this kind of like fat mat insulation matting on which is really good um but it's pretty lumpy and there's some bits where it's kind of like coming up and down over the years so Rather than pull it all out and put a whole new fat mat, which will obviously like, we'll lose a day or two to doing that, um, we've got some of this sort of vinyl floor underlay, which will go under our sheet of wood and then we'll have vinyl on top of that. And it hopefully it should help us take out any like, lumps and bumps. With our last build, we insulated the entire thing, or we tried to insulate it. We watched a lot of van life videos of like, them doing this whole vapor barrier. And yeah, we tried to do that, but obviously didn't factor in the fact that we were doing it in a Land Rover. So even though we kind of vapor barred the whole inside, it still came in from the outside. So then I think that kind of contributed to a lot of the damp that we had behind the wood inside. So yeah, we're just gonna see how it goes this time without insulation. And then I guess we have a good comparison whether the insulation actually made a difference or not. <laughs> yeah. And then we should gain about an inch or so of floor space, which isn't a massive amount, but every little helps. So we've got this piece cut at B&Q because I've got a big like table saw um, giving me exact measurements and I don't know if it's just the saw which is obviously a little bit wonky or the inside of the car which isn't quite square but it fits perfectly at that end at this end we just need to like sand off a little bit just so that this bottom board sits a little bit flatter. <laughs>
Men. That's the plan. We'll have this sort of long panel, which is like the existing bench on the car, and then in here it's just going to be two big closed storage bins, and then there'll be a hinge sort of along there and up along here, and they'll hinge down. So hopefully, it should look something a bit like this rubbish drawing. I don't know if other like vans and trucks and campers have this problem, but got my set square. Nothing is straight ever, anywhere in the car. Or oh, it's even worse there. Can you see me? Okay. <laughs> I've only got a jigsaw. I haven't got a circular saw or a table saw. And I've seen this thing where obviously if you're cutting with the jigsaw because the teeth pull up, there's the risk of it pulling and like shredding that top layer of the ply. But I saw a thing on Reddit where if you get like a sharp blade, you score along the line, it kind of like pre-cuts that top layer so that when you're running it with the jigsaw it doesn't like shred it too much. So we'll test that, we'll see how it works. raining slightly today but how good is this with the big awning so we can still carry on building making progress so we're going to keep the same layout with bed and storage area coming down here and then creating an l shape with like a bigger section that goes behind the driver's seat and then on the left hand side we're going to have like the kitchen and then like the big counter space underneath it um it's what we had like for the last four years and we really like it we've seen some builds where they build all the cabinets really high up and obviously that works with the pop top, but if it's super windy and you've got the pop top closed, then you can't use any of your cabinets and you can't sit inside. Um, so we want to be able to like still be able to sit inside if the pop top's closed. If it turns out actually that we always have the pop top up and we really want high counters, then what we can do is just build a second counter that goes higher up, build a sofa area to go higher up. But for now, we're just going to see how it goes. So for the build, everything's going to be out of 18 mil hardwood. There's going to be some sections where it's nine mil hardwood, like the floor, but for like all the cabinetry, it's just going to be this because it's nice and thick, super strong. It is quite heavy, but we're on a bit of a time crunch and it's all I had available at B&Q, so you've got to do what you got to do. You'd think, looking at the Land Rover, everything's nice and square, but like even this, there's no straight lines in the car whatsoever. The previous owner also fitted some internal roll bars to sort of strengthen the back area, which means that instead of just having a nice long rectangle piece, we've got to do this sort of funny old song and dance to try and like wiggle it all around. But we're getting there slowly. It's taking longer than planned, but hopefully we'll have some sort of cabinetry built by the time we go on holiday next week. <laughs> what did uh, you drop? Drop the nut which I'm supposed to be screwing. Oh, nothing important then. Yeah, I found it again. So I was a little bit stressed about screws like cracking the plywood, so I was like, oh, I'll use dowels. Um, and then in B&Q you can buy little bags of like pre-cut dowels, but they were like three pounds for 25. So like you add up the, the, the length of them, you can just get like a meter long rod of the same dowel for like a quarter of the price. So I saved myself a whole bunch of money. Now I've realized I've actually still got to like cut them all individually. Uh, just taking a long time. So <laughs> time versus money. Yeah. Would you rather cut your own dowels and save money or buy pre-cut ones and you can just knock them straight into the wood? <laughs> So instead of like shop bought dowels, you know, we've got handmade artisanal by local craftsmen and they're all different lengths, so they'll be fine. Obsessed with this back table. Celebratory pan chocolate. Cheers. Dipping it in. Are you looking at it with disgust? No, <laughs> what was that? Mmm. Hopefully, there's no French people watching this. I'm French, I'm loud. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
My dad used to dip croissant in his coffee, and he was as French as they get, yeah. so... True. Maybe it is a French thing. How do I know? <laughs> Looks like we're making really good progress, I think. It's also very slow. It is slow. Everything takes five times longer. <laughs> All right, give it its first hinge. Three. Oh. Ah. Whoa! <laughs> and that's Wooly's bed. <laughs> no. Wow. I think nice he likes it. it. So this side we've decided to just cover with plywood. In this cupboard, it's not doesn't need to be like weight bearing or anything. So it's nothing technical. These are just glued in, and then we've got vinyl to go over the top to make it nice inside the cupboards but yeah we're just gonna have one big cupboard here which will probably be for all of the dog's stuff <laughs> they have a lot of stuff here each one of these will be like a little shoe compartment because we realized last time that it's like perfect place to store shoes because it's like upside down they, it just fits perfectly so yeah one little shoe compartment each and then down here will be more like tools and then the chairs and the diesel heater and just like Miscellaneous, basically. <laughs> nice, so and now we can glue down that rest, that last bit. Double safety specs. So last time we built the interior as well, I think I was quite stressed about drilling holes like into the bodywork and sort of through to bolt stuff in. This time I've got my metal drill bit and it's getting used. I've got like holding it in there, sort of the interior covers as well. So everything's kind of bolted to the car. What's really nice though is that if ever we change our mind, want to pull everything out, all we have to do is undo a whole bunch of bolts rather than like try and pull out like stuff that's been glued down. But last time we used stuff like no more nails and sicker flex and it just meant that it was such a pain pulling everything out because it was all like horrible gunk between the wood and the body of the car but now a couple of bolts and no glue which is really nice so it's uh tuesday today we are supposed to be leaving on friday <laughs> we have actually made quite a lot of progress though i've built the chair seating area we haven't finished the kitchen yet so i'm gonna try and finish the back cupboard seating area which the fridge sits on and then where the boys sit on as well so that's quite important and that kind of makes up the whole like bed sofa area and a lot of our storage this panel here we cut it yesterday so now it's just putting it in place and adding like the hinges progress so far so this is our diesel heater this is where we store the chairs so then they're like super easy to just pull out of this door this is like main cupboard like storage that we can reach from the top and this it's not like put in yet but we need to finish screwing all these little holes but this is where the pipe is gonna go that attaches to the diesel heater and then yeah the top piece comes on here so i'll grab that now <laughs> Nice, here, here we go. We go. Ooh. Open it up. Ooh, needs a handle, but... So, Dometic are helping us uh, upgrade our kitchen for the new build and some new bits just arrived. So we thought we'd unbox them with you. This thing looks so cool. I'm so excited about this. This is so cool. So it's just like a whole kitchen tap set up. Oh. Oh, oh my god. Oh, <laughs> mega thermos. Look at the size of it. <laughs> Two litres for coffee. Perfect. I think that might be enough. Imagine this before like a big long drive. We'll be down like driving towards the Alps. Blink, Blink and we'll be there. <laughs> 
don't know about that knife technique. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I say you're holding the knife? <laughs> Oh yeah. Safety first. Safety first. Always hold the blade. <laughs> Always hold the blade. <laughs> Cut. But you can't believe how big it is. It's just like the biggest thing I've ever seen. Never running out of coffee. Perfect. <laughs> we're starting on the kitchen cabinet now and we're kind of basing the whole thing around this new water jug that we've got. It's from Dometic and it's really cool. It's like, I think it's about 10 litres. Basically it has this like electric water tap. <laughs> so that's really cool. It's rechargeable, but completely separate. So we don't have to worry about wiring it in or anything like that. So that's good. So we're gonna build the cabinet like around this jug, but we wanna have it by the door. So when we open up, we've got easy access to like fill our water bottles and stuff. And then the rest of the counter and cabinet is gonna be there. So you can cook and access it if you need to. But obviously we've got counter here so we don't need really good access to that counter this that's what we're aiming for. We'll see how well it goes. That is not too bad. There's a tiny little bit of a gap here. Hopefully with a bit of sanding, I can just take out a little bit at the bottom. Everything else looks like it's lining up to an acceptable level for this build, which I think is kind of the vibe we're gonna go for. Dinner on the drop down table. Yeah. <laughs> what a way to kick it off. We're just doing the last like kitchen counter bit now. Feels like we've made loads of like really good progress. Been a big day today. Fitted the rest of the big cabinet behind the seats, mm -hmm. which looks really nice. We have to go back to B&Q tomorrow to buy like a nice piece of wood for the kitchen counter. We have to go at 6.30 in the morning. Yeah, I gotta try and go before, <laughs> before work. Before you start work. And hopefully tomorrow night we'll have all the building work finished and then Thursday we can just stain it all. are hoping that our cupboards <laughs> are gonna work because it's been a bit of a guessing game to see what kind of like front we're gonna go for. Yeah. yeah we want the hinges to be like as hidden as possible but we also didn't find the right hinges in the shop to have them sort of hidden on the inside so we've gone for like piano hinges and hopefully we can kind of tuck them in between the two panels so that they're sort of hidden away if we see a little bit of brass like, yeah so be it but we'll see how it goes if it looks terrible we'll probably just Redo, redo it. it. If Hopefully. it looks absolutely garbage, then... <laughs> Let's try again. We built a test one, try and see like how the hinges would work. And that's kind of how it'd look on the front. So we'll try and recreate that. <laughs> see how it goes. <laughs> that's quite good, I think. They look so good. Another one. Chuffed with them. Yeah. Hit them with a little bit of sandpaper and we have a nice little... Looks almost... Do that again. <laughs> Looks almost professional. Almost. <laughs> almost. Almost. Until you look at it in the context of the rest of the car. Nah. No. Alright, should we get them in? Oh, looks so good. We're going for medium oak. Feels like a pretty risk free choice. It's what we had in the last build, yeah. so we're confident we like the look ah. of it. Um, it always looks bad. Yeah, oh, look at that colour. Like, I don't think I've ever opened a stain pot and gone, wow, that looks good. That literally looks so bad but when it goes on it's always a nicer color yeah we went for medium oak because we had it in the last build and we really liked the color like if it got dirty like you couldn't really tell this is too light i think to just do a clear coat especially with dogs so. definitely but we don't want to go too dark because i think it would make you feel really like dark in here so this is like cabin vibes 
hopefully. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Ah! I'm gonna do this first. The practice. Oh wait. Ah! 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 Matches the back door. Okay. It's gonna be good. I mean, too late to back out now, I guess. Okay, I think I like it. Luckily. Happy with the way it looks? Yeah, I think so. I think it's gonna match the back door as well. When we've got one or two coats, it should match the little drop down yeah, table quite nicely. Like Looking really nice. Oh, is that for me? There you go, a little gift Thank to keep you working. You. Yeah, it's really nice. It's really nice, like warm kind of colour as well. Pipe time. Pipe time. Frida's laying pipe. <laughs> <laughs> can't say that. Okay, Frida's inserting a pipe. No, can't say that. <laughs> Wrestling a what's that thing in June? You know the big like sandworm. Oh my god, yeah, what's it called? Sandworm. sandworm. <laughs> you, got, you got your Landover socks on as well. I know. Feeling festive. Mm. Oh my god, this is really hot. Cool, so we got the pipe coming up the hole down here. Okay. Jubilee clip on there to hold it in. Um, feels pretty secure. And we probably eventually gonna try and fill the kind of capping on that side that goes behind the pipe so when we're putting stuff into the car hopefully nothing should should bash it around yeah. so yeah diesel heater okay. down here then the pipe runs through here and we've got a little like protective frame that has to go around it and it sticks out there and we've got a little capping end piece Can somewhere we as well this, don't we? so i finished staining earlier today and it's looking so good we're so happy with it it's somehow managed to like almost colour match with the back um, like drop down table, the front runner table, so that's really good. We're just doing some finishing touches now, like putting in the diesel heater pipe and uh, we just put in this like little like protector here for like when we get in. I'm gonna go grab our new cushions because they look so good. Wait, let me show you. Ta-da! They're really cool. We decided to get like a an outdoorsy furniture fabric, obviously because of the dogs. This is more like wipeable than the last one we had, where it kind of just like soaked in all of like the dirt. If they were like went on like a hike or a walk, and the boys were just like so muddy. So these are really cool because they're like waterproof. We will put in the description like where we got them from. I haven't put the other one into the covers yet, but. Oh. Oh, they nice. look so plump. Uh, God, almost a bit too plump, maybe. <laughs> well, at least I'll be comfortable. I feel when we sit on them, they'll like squish down a bit. So. Give it a little sit, give it a little test ride. Oh, nice. That, that looks cozy. Still got headspace, which is good. Nice. Yeah. So, what's left on the list is just stay in the kitchen cabinet fronts, drill yeah. them in. Drill them in and the kitchen counter. And yeah, sort of the kitchen put counter. Put in like the little magnetic clasped bits. Yeah. And then just add in all of our bits, like the water, the fridge, everything. And then pack the car for the holiday. Pack the car, that's the most exciting Ooh. bit. <laughs> it feels like we're so close now. Now that the cushion's in, it's like, it feels like we're just around the corner from it. Very excited. Oh, let me show you our other cushion idea that we had. So basically, these, I don't know why they're called bolster cushions. But basically we've got one for over there and one to go here. Kind of like back support. But inside <laughs> we've put like our camping sleeping bags and stuff. So yeah, it's just like such good extra storage. This one we don't have any Leo sleeping bag yet, but hopefully. It looks like a Roman, like, you know? <laughs> Doesn't it? Like well, it me when this... There we go. That look looks that. so comfortable. Doesn't that look nice? One thing we found when we're living in the car is that we always want to have as much storage as possible, especially the bits that we don't use when we're living in the car. We want to have a good place to store them. So we just got these new boxes from a Defender Story and we're just going to fit them on the car now. They're super rugged and lightweight and they're waterproof as well and dustproof because they've got a nice rubber seal around the sides. 
Also, our favourite bit. Gastrot. Double gastrots. <laughs> gastrots on everything gastrots from on now everything. on. Yeah. They're perfect for like storing all of our camping gear, things that we want to keep dry but nothing too valuable obviously because it's on the roof. Although it does have a little locking thing here so we will definitely get little locks for them. But yeah, so perfect for camping gear, hiking gear, basically anything that we don't use inside the car. Because we upgraded from the rooftop tent to the pop top we actually don't need the full length roof rack anymore. So it was a nice way to save weight. I think we should save off like 30, 35 kilos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we saved like 35 kilos of weight just by removing the full rack and just having the two individual bars. And then with that, and then with the boxes, they come with all of the hardware that you need to mount the boxes onto there, which means you've got a super clean and simple setup to bring the boxes on and off the roof. So now we're going to fit the new mounts for the boxes onto the roof bars and show you how it goes. All right. So this is the mount for the boxes and there's two per box. And obviously they mount onto the rails. You can also mount them left and right, but we figured it'd be easier to actually be able to access the boxes from the side here so they'll open up this way. So yeah, two per box, they're really nice and lightweight. Um, and like I said, it comes with all the hardware that you need to mount it to a roof rack or a roof bar like this. If ever we go on a trip and we don't need to bring the boxes, we can leave them out on here. And what's really cool is that a really nice low profile and the actual locking me mechanism also folds away and locks away so that you don't get it flapping around when you're driving. And our favorite feature, which we only just discovered, is that they come with a built-in bottle opener as well. So when you're having a cold one, you don't have to worry about opening your bottle. Absolute essential. Absolute essential. Mounting plates have got loads of different options. So if you've got like a really narrow roof bar or like a really wide one like ours are, they should work kind of in any sort of combination, which means it's like almost universal. So much to a Defender Story for sending us these boxes. We're super happy with them, and if you want to get a pair, we'll link all the details and where you can buy them into the description below. After what feels like a super hectic week of building the interior, we were so excited to finally put away the tools and start packing up our gear to hit the road and test the build. And what better way to do so than by driving the North Coast 500 for the first time. We really hope you enjoyed watching the build process. We will be filming a detailed build tour soon, so stay tuned for that, as well as more adventures in Scotland and further afield this summer. Recording? Yes. Yeah. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> And have as much storage as possible. Storage. 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 We're building it. Stalling. <laughs> Where's the music?